We loved to hear the horn blow at midday for dinner when they would come in from the fields.
free world. Because all night, every night in the quarter, the people on are sleeping. But we round that big fire laughing, dancing, talking, making up corn cakes from the Indian corn and a slab of pork from a butchered hog for the morrow's noonday. Traveling diarists across Virginia reported for decades that the black workers were incredibly fit, slept little.
July 14th. Hail the size of walnuts. Lightning kills John Shepherd's horse. The Shepherdstown Register, July 23rd, 1859. We would go out to see the cradlers and the binders and the sheaf weavers at their work. John Fox, John Pinko, Lucas Dennis. In the afternoon, we were allowed to go out to them with a refection, consisting of milk, pies, cakes, ham, and rolls, known as evening peace. Luisa, Kitty, Kitty. and Anne. Then they make bundles tied with straw and stored in rainproof stacks. So July 23rd, dry sheaves are taken back to the barnyard. Relative and writer John Pendleton Kennedy described the scene, likely with John, Benjamin, Steve, and Humphrey Fox riding and guiding. We now visited the farmyard. Within this enclosure, a party of young blacks were employed in treading out grain. About a dozen horses were kept a full trot around a circle of some 10 or 15 paces diameter, which was strewed with the wheat and sheep. These were managed by some five or six little blacks who rode the horses and mingled with the labors of the place that comic air of deviltry which communicated to the whole employment 
something of the complexion of a pastime to a stirring and busy occupation. Pour the grain, light chaff is blown away. Milling into flour. Milling is done by feeding the grist between two huge grooved flat stones. A miller dresses the surfaces of the two stones by recutting a worn down pinwheel formation of grooves on both stones. Called furrows and lands. The raised stitching in the lands is where the fine flowering occurs.
Taking grain to Watson's Mill. Watson's Miller takes sacks of threshed wheat and pours it into the hopper. Ready to mill, the miller opens the gates that divert water to his wheel. As it turns, the wheel's power is conveyed from larger into smaller diameter cogwheels, increasing torque. The power that transmits to the runner's stone. Grist is poured into the hopper, funneling it down a hole to the center of the typically 1,200 pound runner stone that is spinning, maybe 120 revolutions per minute. The miller's most important skill is constantly making sure the stones are the right distance apart. The closer they are with only the grains in between, the finer the flour it's making. This wheel sets the distance. The many grains vibrate their way along the cut furrows and along the lands finally to the outer periphery of the millstones. And there, the flour is examined for quality. Using a sifter and a bolter, ran and unwanted debris are separated out. The finest flour is poured into dry barrels, These barrels of flour in 1859 from the wheat in Jefferson County would head for distant lands over vast oceans.
Flower got to Baltimore ports by train. Or by canal boat to Alexandria, Virginia's port. Paid. The ten cradlers were each paid about two dollars on the twenty-third. The damages got about a dollar a bushel in Baltimore.